Yeah, hi, Jürgen. Um, hi. Particularly the second half, that seemed like a really good performance, maybe one of the best of the, the season. Is that the reaction you were looking for after international break and, and obviously the defeat? So we had this whole reaction. That, that, that's clear. The only problem that we had, obviously, that we were not together for most of the time. So, like, how can you just tell if you have to show reaction? And then, you know, well, how does that work? Is in life difficult? And is in football uh, even more difficult? So, uh, the boys grew in the game today, which is um, very important in football that you can only play well if you start pretty much like with three, four chances in five minutes and play them good football. The boys did it uh, without. Um, so we were in control in the beginning, but was we, we just um, got used to the way Arsenal Arsenal played today, uh, um, and the boys did really well. So we, we scored one nil, and I didn't like about the first half. And the first half was absolutely fine. You know, a lot of good moments. We got some better in some, but it was still a lot of good moments. We won, but I didn't like that the best phase of Arsenal was pretty much after they scored after, after we scored one nil. Um, so when you can see in these moments like. Under pressure slightly, being relieved that you now have, you know, scored the, um, the one goal, but it's not, still not right. So we had to change that. We changed. I think um, after half time we had a really impressive face um, and controlled the game again. So a mix. What I said now already to your colleagues outside it was a mix of a very mature performance and a very exciting, with very very exciting moments, very exciting goals. Great counter press, great high press, um, was really good. And then finishing the situations off, and it's an impressive result. No doubt about that. Thanks. Okay, we'll go to Simon Mullock, and then uh, we've got, I think, uh, Masatoshi to go to. But we've got Simon next, um, and then if there's any other hands up, we'll go to those in the attendees. Uh, hi, Jürgen. You're, you're a very passionate uh, man on the uh, on the touchline. What happened between uh, you and Mik Mikel there? Um, it, it, it seemed quite fairy at, at one point. Actually, not, not a real big deal, but now I told all the others I have to tell you as well. So the situation is that um, it was a completely clean situation. So nothing happened. Two players jump in the air. Nobody touched the other, really, at least not uh, in, in a, like a foul. Uh, and the bench of, of, of Arsenal is, is going for whatever. But they, and I, I just asked, what do you want for that? What do you want? There's no, there's no contact really, and that looks like everybody wants a yellow card. And for me, that's I'm really sick of these situations that everybody tries to, to, to go for Sadio in these moments, um, where he's a physical player, obviously, but he, he doesn't make harsh fouls. But you might remember last year against Real Madrid, the, the, he was completely out, taken out of the game without that he did anything. A yellow card, and then the ref was like, you do one more thing, and you know, against Atletico. We had to take him off because of that, and it's just it's just not right. And that's what I said in that situation. Okay. Any follow-up, Simon? Yeah, could I ask you, do you, do you think that, that kind of, um, I wouldn't say improved the atmosphere, but it, it made the atmosphere certainly more um, exciting? Do you think that, that, that helped you more than it helped Arsenal? Ooh. It was not a plan, but if it helped, then it's okay. But it was still will not happen all the time because um, you said I'm very emotional on the sideline, but it actually doesn't happen very often anymore that I have any kind of arguments with anybody on the sideline. Um, but it was, how I said, a controlled game, but not the most exciting one. And then maybe they need, the, the crowd needed a little little help. And um, so defended from that moment on first me and then pushed the team again. Um, that's absolutely fine, but will not happen all the time. Okay, thank you. Sam. This will be the last question unless we get more hands up. So, uh, Masatoshi. If, uh, Hi, Hi. Um, you know, Taki, fast, uh, great fast touch and fast big goal uh, this season. Um, how important is he going to be, you know, uh, next to Billy Pires? I can't imagine how happy I am with Taki. He's um, an incredible moment. Um, and he was actually today our, our solution for, I think, pretty much four positions. To change um, because the, the how the squad looked, it was like he could could play all, pretty much two, five positions actually. He could play could have played both eight positions and then all three up front. So um, and that's he's a really good moment. You see that he played. I'm pretty sure for Japan pretty well in the, in the international games now, and now he's um, here and very important for us. I'm so happy. Everybody was so happy for him that he scored the goal. The, the way he played today reflects really good how he trains in the moment. So um, 
Yeah, he will have games to learn about that. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Final question, Ian Whittle, to finish the press conference. You're on mute, Ian. If you Thank you, Tony. Sorry about that. Just <laughs> you know, after all this time, after two years. Um, you're not the sort of manager who makes big excuses about injuries, but you do have quite a few players out now. That performance and the last few results, apart from the West Ham game, does that give you particular pleasure in terms of the rest of the season that you've got through this difficult period? No international breaks now, no international games till March, for, for Europeans anyway. Um, <laughs> does it, I, I'm just wondering, so the general state of things in terms of injuries and fitness and, and general health, going on for the rest of the season? International break until March, I heard it so often. Uh, but in, in, in January, it's a, uh, there's a little tournament in Africa, I just want to say. And I think Asia is playing games as well, if I'm on Amazon, right? Sorry? South America. South America as well. Great. Oh, can't wait. Um, so, yes, the situation is not easy. And today, obviously, Joko went off and he got a proper knock against his knee. Or they, they went knee to knee, um, I think. Um, now we have to see. How, how quick that develops in the right direction. Hopefully it's nothing serious. It would be very important. Midfield. Um, now Ox didn't play 20 games in a row. Um, Fab came back from international. Before the international, he was injured. Played then, played there. And Thiago cannot have rhythm really because he didn't play a lot of games because he was injured as well. So um, how the boys play today, how they how they found together um, as a really compact form, into a really compact formation. It's absolutely exciting. And we'll never take these kind of things for granted. I told the boys after the game, um, it doesn't help us a lot for the next four or five weeks, but it helps us for tonight. And that's the only thing we could do today. Now we have to, again need to have a look and um, who is able to go again and um, who we have to rest or whatever. Um, so, and then we will see who, in the moment when somebody tells me, so that's now these are the names, you can have a, make a choice, then I will do that. But we will fight. We will fight with all we have. And um, some players have little chance to come back for Wednesday. I think um, that will be great. And then after that, step by step, hopefully um, they can come back. And then we have more 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 players available, which is absolutely helpful when you play all three days. Super. Thank you, everybody. Have a safe journey. Thank you. Bye bye.